Welcome. <clears throat> I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. This is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya In this course, we are focused on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha is one of the important types of major types of samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayibhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in that order stated in the grammar of Panini. Tatpurusha samasa also has many varieties which other types of samasas do not have. Also, Panini has composed a number of sutras to explain the features of Tatpurusha samasa as compared to the other three types of samasas. The derivation of this Tatpurusha samasa can be shown in brief in the form of the following equation, where you have x and y, two independent different entities in terms of meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent. They are, however, interrelated semantically. So the speaker of Sanskrit decides to join them together and derive one output. So XY is that one output. Now XY is one unit, one unit in terms of the meaning, also in terms of the word form, and also the accent. What is so special about Tatpurusha Samasa here is that in XY, Y occupies the position of the head. Y is the second constituent or Uttarapada of the Samasa. And when XY as one unit is interrelated to the other words in the sentence, this interrelation is possible only through Y and if X is interrelated with any other element external to XY without going through Y, then such a samasa is considered to be an exception and noted down in the tradition as a samartha samasa. We have also studied several types of Tatpurusha Samasa so far. Vibhakti Tatpurusha is what we started from when we studied Karmadharaya and also Dvigu. Then we studied the Ekadeshi Samasa followed by Naya Tatpurusha. Then we studied the Pradi Samasa and then Gati Samasa. Then we also in the course of the study of Gati Samasa studied the Gati Saudhnya stated in 1.4. And then we are studying Upapada Samasa, Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa. This is stated by 2.2.19, Upapadam Ating. In this sutra, Upapadam is in 1.1, which means the word designated as Upapada by 3.192, Tatra Upapadam Saptamistham. And then this Upapada becomes Upasarjana because of Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and then because of Upasarjanam Purvam there is Purva Nipata. The Upasarjana occupies the initial position in the compound. The second word in the Sutra is a thing which is also one one which means which is not thing, which is not a thinganta. 
Now the words continued are sup and sahasupa and also samartha padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra would be any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. So the question is, what is the need of the word a thing in this sutra? And what is achieved by this particular negation? When we make not a tinganta a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. Now, the word subanta is already available to us anyway because of the continuation of the word sup in this sutra. So we are forced to think that in this particular sutra, the basic condition of sup saha supa does not apply, rather sup saha will only apply. And so the structure of the compound thus formed would be of the following kind. We will have first pada, purva pada, with a pratipadika and supratyaya, followed by such an element which consists of a verbal root dhatu and added to it is krit. And the output would be the pratipadika of the purvapada plus dhatu plus krit. We have studied several sutras in 3.2 which state the krit suffixes in the environment of upapadas, thereby deriving the background for upapadam ating, upapada samasas. We have seen several examples like grahastha, samastha, and also goda, kambalada, etc. The next sutra is Purograto Greshu Sartehe, 3218. There are three padas, there are two padas in this sutra. Purograto Greshu is one, and Sartehe is the second one. Purograto Greshu has got three constituents, Puras, Agratas, and Agreshu. This is 7-3, when these are the Upapadas, Puras, Agratas, and Agre. Sartehe is 5 slash 1 of Sarti, which means immediately after the verbal root, Sru, which means to move. Words continued are Dhatoho th from 3191, which means immediately after a verbal root, pratyayaha from 3.1.1. Now, the suffix t is continued from 3.2.16, chareshtaha. Tatropapadam saptamistham is there. Kridating is also present, terming this t suffix as krit. Kartarikrit also is present, saying that this t suffix means karta. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix t is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root sru when upapadas are puras, agratas and agre. I repeat, the suffix t is added in the sense of a karta to verbal root sru when upapadas are puras, agratas and agre. So if the meaning to be expressed is one who moves ahead you will get the following laukika vigrahas and the derived compound output from them following the laid down rule procedure so puras sarati this is the laukika vigraha and from this we will have the suffix ta added to the verbal root sru and so puras su sru ta and then we'll be able to derive the word form Purasara. Similarly, in the same meaning, we'll have the Laukika Vigraha as Agratas Sarati, and the finally derived compound output would be Agratas Sara by adding the suffix ta to the verbal root Sru. Then we also have Agre Sarati as the Laukika Vigraha, 
and the finally derived compound output would be a gray sara by adding the suffix ta to the verbal root sru. So paras sara, agratas sara, and agre sara, these are the finally derived compound outputs. They have the suffix ta at the end. The next sutra is Purve Kartari 3.2.19. Here there are two padas, Purve and Kartari. Purve is 7 slash 1, meaning when the word Purva is the Upapada. Kartari is also 7 slash 1 in the sense of agent or Kartru. Words continued are Dhatoho 3.1.91, that is immediately after a verbal root. Pratyayaha 311, ta is the suffix stated in 3.216, which is also continued. Tatropapadam saptamistham also is continued. Also continued is kardatting and kartarikrat. Kartarikrat states that the meaning of the suffix ta is karta. Sartehe is also continued, which is 5 slash 1, which means immediately after the verbal root sru to move. So the meaning of the overall sutra is the following. The suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root sru when upapada is purva and which is related to the action of moving in the sense of an agent or karta. Repeat, the suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root sru when upapada is purva and which is related to the action of moving in the sense of an agent or karta. So if the meaning to be expressed is the earlier who moves ahead, the laukika vigraha would be purvaha sarati, purvaha sarati. And now we add the suffix ta after the verbal root sru in this particular case. So purva su plus sru and ta, samasa saudhnya happens and then pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies. So we get purva sru ta, tasya lopaha applies and ta is deleted. So we have purva sru a, sarvadhatu karta dhatu ka yoho applies and we have purva sar a and then finally we get the form purva sara. Purva sarati, purva saraha. The point to be remembered over here is that purva is related to the action of moving as karta, which is unique. The next sutra is Kriyaha Hetu Tachilyana Lo Meshu 3.2.20. Kriyaha is 5 slash 1 immediately after the verbal root kru. Hetu tachilya anulom yeshu is 7 slash 3 meaning in the sense of cause, habit and favorability. These are the meanings of hetu, tachilya and anulomya respectively. Hetu is rendered as aikantikam karanam, cause. Tachilyam tatsvabhavata, the habit. And anulomya means anukulata. being favorable or favorability. Words continued are dhatoho from 3.191 which means immediately after a verbal root, pratyayaha from 3.11, ta from 3.216, tatropapadam saptamistham 3.192, kridatting 3.193, kartarikrit 3.467 and kartarikrit states that the meaning of the suffix ta is karta. Now the meaning is, the suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root kru when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma and when the compound conveys an additional sense of cause, habit and favorability. I repeat, the suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root kru when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma and when the compound conveys 
an additional sense of cause, habit and favorability. Hetu, Tachilya and Anulomya. So if the meaning to be expressed is the cause of fame is knowledge. So Yashak Karoti. Jnanam Yashak Karoti. That is the intended meaning. So here Yashaha is related with the action of doing denoted by the verbal root Kru as Karma. And now the meaning intended by the compound is also cause, that is Hetu. So in this case, we will add the suffix T after the verbal root Kru. So we will say Yashaha, Yashas plus Am plus Kru plus T. Samasa Saudhya will take place. Pratipadika Saudhya will take place. So Padhatu Pratipadika Yoho will apply. Tasyalopaha will apply. And we will get Yashas plus Kru plus A. Sarvadhatu Kardhatu Kayoho will apply. And we will have Yashas plus Kar plus A. Yashas Kar A. And because the marker T triggers the adding of the feminine suffix Ngi, we will add it when feminine gender is to be denoted. So we'll have Yashaskari Vidya. Vidya is knowledge. Knowledge is such that is it is the cause of fame. Yashaskari Vidya. Similarly, meaning to be expressed is whose habit it is to make wealth. Artham Karoti. And then the compound finally derived would be artha karaha by adding the suffix t to the verbal root kru and the feminine form of it would be artha kari. Similarly, if the meaning to be expressed is who is favorable in carrying out the order vachanam karoti the suffix t would be added to the verbal root kru and you will get the derived compound output as vachana kara. And the feminine form would be vachana kari. In yashas kara, the sutra atah krukami would apply and substitute this visarga by sa, 8346. The feminine suffix nip is added because of the marker t, which is part of the suffix t. Next, we have a very long sutra, but this sutra has got only one pada. The sutra reads something like this. Diva vibha nisha prabha bhaska ranta nanta di bahu nandi kim lipi libi bali bhakti kartru chitra kshetra sankhya jangha bahu ahar yatta dhanur arushyu. I repeat. Diva Vibha Nisha Prabha Bhaska Ranta Nanta Dina Bahu Nandi Kim Lipi Libi Bali Bhakti Kartru Chitra Kshetra Sankhya Jangha Bahu Ahar Yatta Dhanur Arushu. This is one word, 7 3, and what it means is when these are the Upapadas and they are separated by a hyphen Diva Vibha Nisha Prabha Bhas Kara Anta Ananta Adi Bahu, Nandi, Kim, Lipi, Libi, Bali, Bhakti, Kartru, Chitra, Kshetra, Sankhya, Jangha, Bahu, Ahar, Yat, Tat, Dhanus and Arus. Words continued are Dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root, Pratyayaha from 311 and T is continued from 3 to 16. Tatropapadam Saptamistham is continued. Kridat thing is there. Kartari Krit is also present. Kriyaha is continued, which means immediately after the verbal root Kru. And so the overall meaning of the Sutra is the suffix T is added in the sense of a Karta to the verbal root Kru when Upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a Karma. And when the compound conveys an additional sense of cause, habit 
and favorability. I repeat, the suffix t is added in the sense of a karta to verbal root kru when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of karma and when the compound conveys additional sense of cause, habit and favorability and when the upapadas are diva, vibha, etc. So the meaning is the following. One who makes day. So this is the meaning and we have diva karoti which expresses this sense. So we have diva karoti as the laukika vigraha and we add the suffix t after the verbal root kru and we get the form diva kara as the finally derived compound output diva kara. Similarly, who makes luster and the laukika vigraha is vibham karoti and the finally derived output is vibhakara. Then when the meaning is who makes night, the laukika vigraha is nisham karoti and the finally derived compound output is nishakara. When the meaning is who makes light, the laukika vigraha is prabham karoti and by adding the suffix t, the finally derived output is prabhakara. So these are some of the very common names, Divakara, Prabhakara, Vibhakara, etc. which are derived in this particular manner. Similarly, who makes luster? So Bhasam Karoti is the Laukika Vigraha and the generated output would be Bhaskara. Similarly, who makes tax? Karam Karoti is Karakara. Similarly, who makes end? Antam karoti is the laukika vigraha and antakara is the finally derived compound output, antakara. Similarly, who makes infinite? If this is the meaning to be expressed, the laukika vigraha is anantam karoti and then the finally derived output is anantakaraha. Similarly, one who makes the beginning, if this is the meaning to be expressed, we have the laukika vigraha adim karoti and the finally derived output is adi karaha. Similarly, when the meaning is who makes many, so bahum karoti is the laukika vigraha and the finally derived output is bahukara. Then who makes sanandi? If this is the meaning to be expressed, we have the laukika vigraha nandim karoti and the finally derived output is nandi karaha. Now one who makes kim, kim karoti is called kinkara. So the finally derived output is kinkara by adding the suffix t to the verbal root kru. One who makes the script and here we have lipim karoti as well as libim karoti as the laukika vigraha and from that we get the compound output lipikara as well as libikara. Then we have the meaning who makes oblation and the laukika vigraha is balim karoti and the compound output is balikara. Then when the meaning is who makes devotion, bhaktim karoti and so we add the suffix t to the verbal root kru and we get the compound output in the form of bhakti kara. Similarly, one who makes agent. So kartaram karoti is the laukika vigraha and kartra kara is the finally derived compound output. Similarly, who makes painting. Chitram karoti is the laukika vigraha and chitra kara is the finally derived compound output. Then who makes a field is the meaning to be expressed and we have kshetram karoti as the laukika vigraha and kshetra kara as the finally derived output. Similarly who makes one is the meaning to be expressed and ekam karoti 
is the laukika vigraha and by adding the suffix ta we derive ekakara as the compound output then who makes a thai is the meaning and jangham karoti is the laukika vigraha and jangakara is the finally derived compound output then finally one who makes am so bahum karoti and the finally derived output is bahu kara similarly one who makes a day if this is the meaning to be expressed we have the laukika vigraha ah karoti and the finally derived compound output is ahas kara then who makes which yat karoti is the laukika vigraha and then we get the form yat kara as the finally derived compound output by adding the suffix ta to the verbal root kru then to express the meaning who makes that we get the laukika vigraha tat karoti and the compound output is tat kara then one who makes a bow and we have the laukika vigraha dhanuh karoti and the compound output is dhanush kara then we have one who makes the wound as the meaning to be expressed and the laukika vigraha is aruh karoti and the finally derived output is arush kara and the feminine form of all these forms would be bahukari ahaskari yatkari tatkari dhanushkari and arushkari by adding the suffix e which is triggered by the marker t to summarize hetu tatchilya and anulomya cause habit and favorability are the three additional meanings conveyed by the compound only and with the particular suffix only generating particular feminine forms as well 3221 generates compound forms not in the context of the above three additional meanings high productivity of 3220 is highlighted by numerous exceptions stated in 3221 we studies the other sutra stating the upapada samasa based suffix in the next lecture these are the texts referred to thank you very much